Hello, everyone. Justin Bradford, Penalty Box Radio, and have another PBR quick hit and some exciting news for local hockey here. Hayden White joining me. He just signed with the USPHL Mad Hatters down in Atlanta. So another high school hockey product going on to play junior hockey. Hayden, thanks so much for joining me. Thank you, Justin. So just tell us about this, this whole ordeal with you and the exciting news behind it that you're going on to play junior hockey now. Well, uh, I think it started the sophomore year. I started looking at uh, different junior teams to play for, and they were kind of looking at me, and we were communicating a little, but nothing really got serious until obviously this off season when I didn't know where I was going to be going. So Atlanta is just closest to home, and I feel like I feel like that's the best place for me to play. Absolutely. And so Hayden, you're you're a defenseman. Just what's it been like playing uh, that role for you as well? So I mean, people look at the stat sheet; they're not going to see as much stats, but defensemen aren't always known for racking up stats like that. So just tell us a little bit about your position and what that's been like for you as in your development. Yeah, so I've played D pretty much ever since I started playing, but um, high school hockey is pretty physical down here. So, you know, it's just my mindset was just trying to be that two-way defenseman to get up in the rush and be able to get back and play D. But, uh, yeah, just the physical aspects of everything, that's, that was the main factor for me and everything. And so you played for Blackman Stewart's Creek uh, for three seasons. What was that experience like for you playing G. Nash and playing high school hockey here? Um, playing high school hockey was – I made probably the best memories I've ever made in my life. Uh, just the friendships that I could build over all four years because we'd have freshmen come in and then seniors would leave. And, you know, I still keep in touch with most everybody that I, I used to play with, especially last year's team. Um, you know, our team always wasn't the, the top-end team, but, you know, we, we gutted it out and tried playing as hard as we could and tried to make the best of everything. And, and we're seeing more players from GNASH go on to play junior and go on to, to play college and things like that. What does it say about the hockey product in Middle Tennessee now that we're seeing more players getting scouted and getting recruited to continue their careers? Oh, it's great. I, th I think Middle Tennessee is very underrated in the, in the hockey world. No one, like going to Atlanta, I'm playing with a, a guy that I played against in GNAS, Ryan Strohmeyer. And I just think that's that's crazy. Like all the way in Atlanta, I'm playing a guy that I played against, and I didn't even know that was going to happen. <laughs> but the hockey here is is pretty good. And what was this? What was the process like in terms of Atlanta reaching out to you and saying, "Hey, we want you to come play for us"? Well, it was it was like a week long process of going through different teams, and me and my parents decided Atlanta would probably be the best fit. And they had reached out to me before, so we reached out to them, and, you know, we had been talking and everything. And I went down there and skated once, and it went really well. And then the next week, I stayed over, stayed the night for two days and had a meeting with my new head coach, and uh, he basically said that they wanted me and everything. So we went down the other day with my whole family, and I got to sign the contract to play. That's awesome. That, that's absolutely awesome. And how – how has this pandemic kind of affected you being able to skate a little bit? I'm sure it's probably there's a little bit of rust, but I mean, as a hockey player, there's just like riding a bicycle, things get there, but a little maybe more soreness and everything. So what was that like um, having a little time off and having to go skate? Yeah, so I've been trying to, you know, stay active as much as possible to keep my conditioning up. But I've got, uh, thankfully, it's the Mars Blade skates where I'm able to skate outside on the in the driveway and shoot pucks and everything. So when I got to Atlanta, I was definitely really rusty <laughs> since it was two and a half months. But I told my uh, my head coach now that you know, I was like, I'm going to be pretty rusty. It's not going to be be pretty, but I got it out, and it wasn't too bad. Boy, now hey, if you know if they're looking to sponsor somebody right there, they got they got a product for somebody right there to sponsor. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so I, I've been down to that rink where the Mad Hatters play because that's also where Georgia Tech uh, plays mm -hmm. their hockey, and it is a beautiful facility down there as well. It's right in a retailer, so it's restaurants and everything mm -hmm. really close, which is nice too. But one thing I noticed was along the board, so the edging is a different. It's a dark green color, is it not? Mm -hmm. So yes, it is. I know people have thought that's the home ice advantage there because the home players are used to playing against the dark green when usually we're seeing like red or yellow. So mm -hmm. do you think that's going to be a little bit of home ice advantage, especially as a defender? I'm sure they could come in handy. Yeah, maybe. Uh, I haven't really thought into that that much. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, I've I've always played against the the red and the the occasional yellow. I think I may have played against a, a black one time and a blue. I think that's it. But never <laughs> never green. I, I'm still trying to adjust to the the green. It's Dallas colors, so I don't <laughs> not that big of a Dallas fan. So we'll have to figure that one out. <laughs> <laughs> so and and looking at this too too what. What excites you about playing junior hockey? And the USPHL has been around for a little bit now. They're getting closer to a decade. But, I mean, some big names have played there. So Jack Eichel, Jimmy Vesey, Zach Sanford, who's a Stanley Cup winner now as well. So they have some success stories in terms of building you up for the next step. So what is the, what is the goal for you here in the USPHL? Um, my goal is just to, you know, get as much better as I can before I go on and play college or maybe a – low pro level anything like that just you know I want to go as far as I can playing the game you only got so long to play the game and I just want to make every opportunity that I can that makes total sense totally understandable so let's get to know you a little bit more as a defenseman is there a pro player uh, whether it's current or past that you've kind of modeled your game after that you really like to look up to <laughs> it's funny you ask that because everybody that all my teammates they always call me baby Yossi <laughs> so, so uh, Roman Yossi, he's, he's obviously my hero. Ever since I was a little boy, I always followed, followed Yossi because I, I remember him getting drafted to the Preds. I was, I was pretty little, 2008. So, I, I don't, I'm not bad at math. I don't know how old I was. So, but I've followed him ever since he was playing in Switzerland and all the way to Milwaukee, and then now he's captain. So, it's definitely so Yossi. What is it about his playing style? Because he's like the, the defenseman of the future when you kind of look at it being, you know, mobile, obviously, and good in both ends and everything. So what about his game really appealed to you as a player? Um, I just think the way he can move the puck. I mean, it's just unbelievable how he can enter the zone just like no problem. He just um, – definitely on the power play. Just the Preds have had their struggles on the power play. But when I'm watching, he can just move the puck right into the zone and then everybody gets in just – he's so mobile. That's how I want to create my game after is just being that mobile. It's crazy to like watch how how good he is on his edges and everything. It's just unreal. And so now I gotta ask as well because Roman Yossi has pretty good style. Are you gonna match his style on, on game days? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm I'm trying. I'm trying. I've got a I got a couple suits, a uh, couple different shoes that I'm gonna try to try to get going. We'll, we'll see. You got to get that beard going, but still. Yeah, he's got a huge smile. beard going yeah. right now. Yeah, I'm trying. To, I'm trying. I'm trying. It's not pretty. <laughs> so I'm sure. I'm sure the coaches down there asked you as well too. What are you going to bring to the Mad Hatters? What What is something that you expect to bring to this team that maybe they didn't have before? Um. Well, I'm sure they've had it, but definitely, <laughs> definitely leadership. I feel like my leadership qualities can can drive a team to go as far as possible um and just hard work just outworking everybody just playing as hard as I can and just leading the team to victory yeah that's a good mentality to have so let's get personal now and everything you know you talked about the player that you emulated and everything what's a typical game day like usually for you I know you know school and everything is different but let's say for instance it was a, a non-school day you know what's your typical game day meals or any music you listen to to get you pumped up things like that well, uh, last year it was, you know, we, we had school most of the day, like you said. So I'd get to school. Well, we had to dress up every day. So it was suit and tie. I'd pick out a different tie every day. Um, I'd get school, probably sleep first period, second period. <laughs> probably shouldn't say that, but uh, um, yeah, it's just uh, I try to just keep my mindset perfect at school. And then get home, and then my game day stuff would happen. Like I'd, I'd normally eat the same thing. It, it switch up a couple, couple games. I had some rough couple games, so I'd, I'd switch up eating. But uh, one of my best friends, Trent Hunter, he'd always uh, ride to uh, games with me. So, okay. And we, we'd blast all kinds of different music going down the interstate. I mean, it'd be rocking in my car. Um, but on games that we, we didn't have school, it would, it'd be a lot more serious throughout the day like I'd, I'd try to get up as pretty early not too early but I'd get up and probably go out and shoot pucks um probably take a nap uh then I'd, I'd sometimes I'd get a bunch of players to go to the rink 
and like sticking pucks we we just yeah. kind of shoot around and everything and then we'd we'd come home and stay at my house and just relax play video games sleep but uh let's i'm trying to think uh something so, else was there, uh, was there a, was there a go-to song though that you always had to play or just a just go-to song okay so we, me and Trent would always listen to the same exact playlist, which I, cr I created the playlist, but there's a song on there, Blake Shelton, God's Country, that we just turned the dial all the way up, and I, <laughs> my, my mirror would like be shaking, we'd just be so hyped, God's Country, yeah, that's, that's definitely it, and Run This Town, oh, yeah. Fred's playoff that's song. That's a good one, so. well, I'm going to have to yeah. make sure to tag Blake Shelton in this. <laughs> I mean, that, that's, the, that's the thing that I'm excited for, because obviously country music tends to be pretty hot in the hockey world, but I'm, I'm waiting for that day where we really have a lot more Southern men taking over in the pros to where, mm -hmm. you know, I, I want to see that happen where it's, you know, guys that are really from the South playing the pros doing post-game interviews. That's what I, uh -huh. I can't wait for that day. Yeah, yeah. So would you say you're, you know, you eat, you're a pasta kind of guy, you got a carbo load and then get some, some protein like grilled chicken, things like that. Are you a pro style diet guy? Are you still in the, hey, I'm young, I can enjoy a lot? <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of both. On game days, I was more the the pro, like, like pasta. My mom would make her spaghetti for me. And uh, uh, I'd eat a lot of Chick-fil-A before the game because that's, right. that's pretty healthy for – for you um <laughs> yeah it's, it's fast food but it, it can get pretty healthy if you make it yeah <laughs> um but on practice days I wouldn't really really worry about it too much I'd just eat whatever I could get my hands on Burger King anything Blame like not that Cheetos, got it yeah yes yes <laughs> but uh spaghetti pasta I'd actually my mom would make me these kind of steak medallion kind of things which oh. they're pretty they're pretty they're pretty that's a pretty heavy meal but it was it was really good so i couldn't say no to it plenty of so I, I don't eat it yeah <laughs> all right so what is your favorite hockey movie my favorite hockey movie it's got to be miracle yes my it's man got to be miracle my man I, I... every single hockey tournament i went to me and my mom would have a dvd player and we'd watch miracle every single road trip that's it's awesome. just yes it's so, amazing. So you mentioned that as well, and this is for pretty much every hockey player out there. How much parental involvement, how, how big has it been for you in terms of having support from your family? Oh, it's huge. They're, if if it wasn't for them, who knows where I'd be. Um, my mom and my dad, not only them, my sister and her brother-in-law, they all four of them just, they, they push me as far as I can go. And um, they're always there for me after I have rough games. So they kind of get my mind off of it. And yeah, if it wasn't for them, who knows? I'd probably definitely want to be playing hockey. Um, yeah, they're just great. It just shows how big of a deal it is. And hockey is one mm -hmm. of those sports. There's so much traveling involved. There's so much that you have to have the whole family involved, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> Not, one person can't do it all. <laughs> no, no. Especially when I was little, I couldn't be driving myself all at practice, <laughs> late nights, early mornings. It's just, it's crazy. So, so let's look a little bit more into this as well, too. You know, you said Miracle is your favorite hockey movie. If you had to rank maybe your top three, you know, what would come after Miracle? Um, my second favorite hockey movie to Miracle would be, and it's a movie that doesn't get uh, mentioned that often. It's, uh, I think it's a Hallmark movie, actually, which is kind of embarrassing. But uh, it's uh, Mr. Hockey, the Gordy House story. Oh, okay, yeah. It's 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 one of my favorites. Yeah. I don't I don't know what it is, but uh, I was a big Gordy Howe fan. Oh yeah. I got to I never got to see him play, obviously, but uh, I watched highlights, obviously, and he's his just mentality playing is just crazy how they played back then. Oh yeah. And uh, the third movie, um, maybe if I had to pick, it may be Goon. Okay. It's it's a bad movie. <laughs> I hope my mom don't hear that, but it's 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 uh, it's pretty funny. Me and my uh one of my best friends, Hayden Davenport, uh, he was just over last night. Uh, me and him watched it coming back from Gatlinburg. He was the one that showed me the movie. I was like, oh god, this movie's bad. <laughs> it would get you rolling. Mom, there's no bad language at all in Goon. There's no nothing bad at all in Goon. It is a full family friendly hockey movie. Please don't watch it. <laughs> <laughs> so, there, there would be one more too it's yes yeah. 
it's this kind of a uh, foreign movie, which is, I forgot the name of it. It's, it's a kind of a Indian, Indian movie where he's playing hockey. Breakaway. That's what it's called. Breakaway. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's pretty good. I All didn't right. think I would I like it that much, but it's pretty good. All right. So, so I'm going to have to add that to the list because I haven't seen that one. Yeah. Yet. Yeah. So now during this pandemic and everything like that too, we've been asking a lot of these other hockey players what they've been doing because they haven't been able to skate as much. So are there any other new skills that you've kind of taken to? Have you been watching, binge watching anything on streaming or video games or anything like that? <laughs> well, I, my day kind of consists of working out as much as I can. I kind of built like a, a makeshift gym. I got a punching bag and some weights. But uh, after that, I'd come in and, me and my mom. My dad doesn't doesn't like the shows we watch too much because of the <laughs> the foul language. Uh, but uh, uh, me and my mom, we first watched Tiger King. Oh boy! We, we go. <laughs> we got on the bandwagon of Tiger King. You know, I, I watched the first episode and I was like, "Mom, you gotta watch this. It's crazy." <laughs> because me and her are into the, all the crime stuff and mm -hmm. all stuff like that. So we finished that and we were like, "What are we gonna watch now?" And I was like, well, The Last Dance is about to come on in a couple of weeks. Yeah. So we binged watched The Last Dance. We watched every single episode. I think my mom misses one, but I watched them all. And that, that was my favorite show. It was crazy to, to watch Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen and Dennis Rodman do all that stuff. Oh, man. Yeah. And I, got, I luckily got to watch that growing up. As oh, a kid. Yeah. And I'd give it anything to go back and watch that. Man, it's I remember crazy. watching the finals and there's me with a ball, a sock ball <laughs> and, and juking around in the living room and then shooting into the laundry. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's crazy to think like my idol was growing up was Kobe Bryant. Of course. Oh, yeah. So Kobe, he's like up here and michael jordan watching all that he's up here now like they're my top two favorite so but kobe bryant he's he's definitely my favorite rest oh, of yeah. these well in the relationship too that they had yes. as well how he really pushed himself because of michael mm -hmm. uh as well so it's just it's really cool to see these behind the scenes sports stories and yeah i know mm -hmm. it was driven by michael jordan yeah he's telling that story which mm -hmm. uh, which is really cool as well I and mean, we see that in hockey too so hey one day we'll have to have that story on you right yeah hopefully hopefully uh I can get to the Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant level. I think that'd, that'd be amazing. Small town boy makes it, makes it all the way. That'd be, be amazing. Well, Hayden, we're, we're all cheering for you here and very excited for you and your future with hockey as well and representing just hockey in the South and hockey from Nashville. So just a, a tremendous congratulations to you and best wishes in the future. This won't be the last time we catch up with you because we're going to want to see no, how it's going not. down there in Atlanta. Uh, so big congratulations from us and look forward to, to watching you. Thank you, Justin. It means a lot.